I actually have quite a bit to say about this one because it's it's very frustrating because it kind of represents what I like about Hollywood and what I hate about Hollywood. On one level, it's a very good movie. The acting's good, the writing's good, the directing's good. It's it's very enjoyable. Uh, it's very witty and funny. Daniel Craig does a great performance. Most of the characters do a really good performance in this movie. On the other hand, they just have to insert like really abrasive political messages into this for no reason. Like there, there is no reason for it. And it just made me kind of angry as I was watching it. And I almost felt like leaving a couple times because Hollywood can't help itself. It just has to attack and show its complete and utter contempt for the average American. Um, and that, that frequently happened uh, during this movie. So why did I go see this? Um, it's been getting really good reviews. Um, well, I don't really care about the Oscars. It's it's kind of nice to have seen a couple of movies that are they're up to be nominated. Uh, generally, I'll try and see one or two if it's something it looks like I'd be interested in. And murder mystery isn't like my ideal genre, but it's something I'll I'll definitely watch if it looks good. And a comedy murder mystery is a lot more up my alley than like some pretentious art film or some like social justice yet another movie about the 1960s civil rights movement or slavery or one of the billion ones that come out every year and always get nominated. So there's that. And the other thing I was really interested in was this is directed and written by Ryan Johnson. Yes, that Ryan Johnson, the guy who made The Last Jedi. And I kind of wanted to see another movie by him because as bad as The Last Jedi was, you can tell just from watching it, he has some talent as a filmmaker. Like the cinematography looks really good. Um, the editing was good in it. it. The Last Jedi, if you ignore kind of the writing and like everything about the like the plot, it, it is more, I think, competently made than um, The Force Awakens or The Rise of Skywalker. And this just seemed more like something that was up Ryan Johnson's alley because this is a black comedy murder mystery. So this is a case for having like just random stuff, goofy stuff happening, sudden plot twists, kind of ambiguous stuff going on. This is like a genre where it's good to surprise people and do the unexpected. And I think this movie really did play to Ryan Johnson's strengths. And like I said, it was a very well-made made movie. So let's kind of get into the plot and what I liked about it and what I disliked about it. So the framing device for kind of the movie is a wealthy novelist, Harlan Thrombe, is having his 85th birthday and he's had all of his extended family show up for it. And that's about all we know, like initially. And then the next morning, his nurse finds him dead. Now, before we get into the plot, let's just talk about this a bit. So the nurse is played by Anna de Armas, who I think is a strikingly beautiful woman. But for this movie, they decided that they have to make her look more Hispanic because she's, let's just be honest, a white Cuban. I think she's like half Spanish, half Cuban, or just fully Cuban. I know she grew up in Cuba, but she's just white. But for this movie, they had to make her look more Hispanic. So she has green eyes and light brown hair. So they like dyed her hair really dark and they like tanned her skin a lot. And they just tried to make her look more, I guess, what they would consider to be Hispanic. And that always amuses me. Although at a certain level, I guess it's kind of giving Hispanics their due because they're really underrepresented in movies. So her character is the nurse, and she's kind of the protagonist, and it's, it's really big about how hardworking she is, how kind she is, etc. But the thing is, her family are illegal immigrants from Paraguay, and, and the American dream is just being denied to her because they, they illegally came here. But she has a right to be there. And all the evil white people who are so petty and greedy, they have no right to be there. They need to be like physically removed so she can be there. And it's like, there's no reason for this other than him just, and there's even a scene where they like attack Trump. Like they, they openly have a guy who's a Trump supporter and they like trash him. And, and it's like, they could have just had her like be poor 
like she just came from a, a poor background or she had or her parents died and she was an orphan. I mean, to have the character work, there's all kinds of other things they could have done, but they had to make it political and they had to make it about illegal immigration and her being a better person and more righteous, dispossessing those who had more of a birthright to something. And that just bothered me. And it's there, like I said, there was no real reason to put it in the movie other than to just politicize it. So like I said, Harland is found dead the next morning. And the police show up and they begin to interview the various um, children. So it turns out that most of his children are kind of complete disasters. The widow of one of his children is a lifestyle guru and um influencer jamie lee curtis is i think the only one who's like not a complete mess uh one of them is the ceo of his father's uh publishing company so yeah none of them are like i don't know they, they all have their own issues and then the rest of the extended family are like also kind of like not too good like chris have evans is ransom hugh ransom drysdale who's Harlan's grandson, and he's like a rich, spoiled playboy. So, and he's very unpleasant. And then, to this movie's credit, one of the grandchildren is studying gender studies at um, some liberal arts university, and a couple of the other characters who are supposed to be kind of like ignorant Republicans make fun of her a couple times, calling her like, I think they call her like a special snowflake, um, like, gender studies major like they, they kind of make fun of her and then there's one guy who is a uh, one of the children is like an edge lord who is always on the phone fo- always on his phone and apparently is like uh, like his alt-right and there is one point in the movie where he calls her an ache uh the he calls anna de armaz's character uh who's named marta just as we go forward in the plot an anchor baby so that was pretty funny, but um, yeah, he wasn't used much in the movie. He was just there to like make fun of the alt right for some reason. So as the police interview the people, they find out that all of them have a motivation to kill the um to kill Harland. It turns out that he basically disinherited all of them. Ah, uh, he fired his son who ran the publishing company. Uh, he blackmailed one of his son-in-law as he was having an affair. Uh, he cut off his daughter-in-law, who was g- receiving an allowance to fund the gender studies girls' education, but she was embezzling a bunch of money from him. So he cuts her off. Um, he tells what's her name? Uh, what's his name? Uh, Chris Evans' character Ransom that he's disinherited. So he disinherits his entire family. And this is kind of an interesting turn that this film takes because it gives you like what happened like 20 minutes into the movie. So Marta is getting interviewed and she has like a flashback to what actually happened. So apparently what happened is Harlan and her were playing Go. Why they're playing Go, I, I don't know. And Harlan loses so he tips the board over so she supposedly takes out, um, is giving him his medication and gives him 100 milligrams of one of the uh, his normal medication, but she also is going to give him 3 milligrams of morphine, or the good stuff as they call it. And then after she's given it to him, she notices that she actually gave him 100 milligrams of morphine and 3 milligrams of the other one. So he's going to be dead within 10 minutes and she offers to call him an ambulance on the off chance he's going to survive. But he decides that because he likes her and he hates his family, that he's going to use his murder mystery writing skills to come up with a way for her to get rid of, to get away with the whole thing. So she does a bunch of stuff to basically make it look like a suicide. And he does actually slit his throat before she... Uh, before he dies from the the morphine overdose, or at least that's what we're 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 supposed to think. So then the the will reading happens, and it turns out that he left her everything. Now, once again, 
I don't necessarily disagree that this is a bad idea because his family are mostly, let's be frank, shitheads. Um, so I, I can understand him not wanting to lend, uh, leave them anything and instead wanting him to leave it to his nurse or someone he thinks is more deserving. I, I can kind of get that. It's, it's something that just kind of on a personal level bothers me because this is a thing that's happened a lot in my family where my grandparents and great grandparents have not left any money to my parents uh, because they they believe that they that you shouldn't inherit money you have to be a self-made man even though all of them inherited in some cases like millions of dollars so they leave their entire estate to like charities um and they refuse to leave like my parents anything like I said, even though they inherited a huge amount of money, and in a lot of cases they kind of squandered it on uh, cruises and stuff like that, uh, they refused to kind of pay it forward. So, as shitty as his family is, I kind of feel family's family, and if he wanted to leave her, like, the rights to his novels or something, like, I get for the how the plot will work, but it does kind of bother me. And there's kind of like the illegal immigrant aspect to this, like, oh, she's it, she's being left the house, she's being left America. And there's like a scene in one of the flashbacks where one of the the guy who's having an affair is a Trump supporter, and her and him and some other woman are like, oh, it's not a race thing. We just these immigrants are coming in like they own everything. We want, we aren't against illegal immigration. We want more legal immigration. And he's like, you came to this country legally and you did the right thing. And of course, she didn't come to the country legally. And that's trying to say like, oh, she's good. She's this like really virtuous girl. All illegal immigrants are like her. So you should support more illegal immigrants because they're more virtuous than the, the native population. So that irritated me. So they hired Daniel Craig's character, who is a famous... Uh, ben on, Bennett, LeBlanc, uh, Bennett Blanc, who is a private detective, and he has my most favorite accent in the world, and the accent that he has is the Virginian accent. And I have to say, I do declare that the Mid-Atlantic accent is perhaps the most charming accent that has ever been created by man. Um... So he investigates it and he gets Marta to kind of be his sidekick and he kind of goes through everything. And I'm not going to kind of go bore you with the the middle of the movie where we kind of have a bunch of twists and there's like evidence they find. And it really looks like, for most of the movie at least, that Marta screwed up and that the rest of the movie is her kind of trying to cover it up. And that kind of really bothered me because once again, there's the whole like, the reason for it is she's like, I'm willing to go to jail. But if, if the law the, the, if the law does like a background check and they figure out that we're illegal immigrants, my my sister and my grandmother will get deported. And I, I can't allow, or my mother will get deported. And I can't allow that to happen. I can't allow the evil Americans um, to deport them, even though at that point in the time, it, it looks like her criminal negligence led to their um, death. Uh, led to her employer's death. And there's like another part of the movie where she's trying to outrun the cops and she pulls some really dangerous maneuvers. And she very easily could have gotten a number of people killed during that. But it's it's justifiable because we can't deport people. That's that's mean. It's that's that's evil. So yeah, so a bunch of stuff happens, it goes along. Daniel Craig's character is kind of presented as being a bit of a moron and a bumbler. And then, like, eventually, the family tells her that, threatens her, and they said, either you give the will, you renounce the will, you give us all the money back. Because they were obviously left nothing. And if you give all the money back, then um, we aren't going to rat on you and tell ICE that you're here illegally and get you deported. So she gets on board with uh, Chris Evans' character who seems to come out of nowhere and help her, and he convinces her to tell him the truth, and he's like, I'm going to help you cover this up if you give me my share of the inheritance. 
So you can keep like 90% of it. You give me like five to 10% of it and I'll help you cover this up. So he starts to help her kind of cover the whole thing up and the plot just kind of goes along. And it turns out that the only thing that can really convict her is there's a toxicology report. And if, if that gets published, uh, if the police find that, they'll find out that he had the morphine overdose and then he died from that. And then she'll be in trouble. And kind of one of the, the rubs, as it were, is if she's found guilty of a crime, even in civil court, even if it was just an accident, uh, then she loses everything in the will. Um, it's called the Slayer Clause or something like that. So she ultimately gets a copy of the toxicology report. But his ha uh, a bunch of stuff happens, and Harlan's uh, housekeeper winds up trying to blackmail her, and then she gets taken to a hospital. And Marta's kind of had an enough of the whole thing, so she decides to go and uh, confess to everything. Um, the, the twist, though, is the toxicology report comes back clean. Um, she hadn't injected the morphine. What, what had happened and what the big reveal is, is Chris Evans' character had switched the labels on the, the two medications. So how she didn't notice that is the two medications weigh different amounts. Like there's, there's different amounts in each of them. They have a different viscosity. They have a different weight to them. So she just picked it up based on how much it weighed and, and gave it to him. So she didn't actually poison him at all. The whole thing was to kind of trick her uncle, uh, sorry, to trick uh, Harlan into committing suicide, which is what he did. Another kind of important aspect to it was there is an antidote for a morphine overdose, but he, um, Chris Evans' character had snuck in and taken that out. So that was kind of interesting. The reveal was kind of interesting. Um, Daniel Craig's character kind of came back and explained the whole thing, and that was enjoyable. Um, they managed to kind of get Chris Evans' character to confess to the whole thing. And the film ends with Marta kicking everybody out of her mansion and deciding that she is the boss and she's not going to share any of the money with them because they're all um, shitheads. So, overall, it's a good movie. Um, I, I didn't really want to go too much into the plot just because this movie's over two hours long. And there's a lot of twists and turns and a lot of things that are kind of hard to grasp in a verbal review. But it's just like, it would be good, but they just have to insert this, like, underlying message out of nowhere. And, like, her character is so righteous that she vomits if she tells a lie. Because lies are just that against her nature, because she's so much better than the Americans. And it's, it's, just, it's just kind of really annoying. Um, so that's kind of my issue with the movie. Uh, like I said, it's not a, it's not a terrible movie, but it, it's kind of obnoxious. So those are my thinking that those are my thoughts on it. I hope you enjoyed the review and I'll talk to you guys real soon.